being we're here to be of service we're here to learn you know spirituality is in a, in a practical we're in a classroom yeah. you know you you can't learn metaphysics until you've mastered physics which is strange for some you know people so many spiritual people just want to be in the bottom of the garden with the fairies or meditating yeah. or they don't think of it being a spiritual way that you can go out and get a science degree or you can start a business Welcome to Mind the Shift, the podcast about a shifting world and shifting minds. My name is Anders Bolling. We haven't had many music artists on on this podcast, uh, musicians. Uh, I believe it's about two or three. We've had all the more spiritually oriented people on the show. Sometimes those categories coincide. Welcome to the show, Jack Stafford. Hello, Anders. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be fun and interesting, I'm sure. Um, we just, I mean, recently connected you and I. Um, you run a podcast of your own, which I find, you know, super interesting. And and it, it seems as if you have you have something really unique going on there. Thank you. You're developing something very special. Can you can you please tell us a little bit what it's about and how how you do that? Sure, sure. Well, the backstory is that I've been a musician for a long time. Um, and then we had the coronavirus come along. I don't know if you've heard about this. Oh, no. What, what is that? Some kind of virus? or? Yeah, I won't go into the, the okay. story, but you can we'll look it up. Talk about afterwards. that later, yeah. Yeah. And so I wasn't able to go out and do the normal promotion. So I, for my new album, I did a lot of podcasts and I thought, hey, you know, this is fun. This is great. I can just chat for an hour because normally with a you know a press interview or a radio you get maybe five minutes where you're just talking to some journalists and then they do the write-up but with a podcast you know it's talking about me and my ideas you know my favorite subjects the music for an hour or so yeah so i'm happy here so i i enjoyed it and i did a few more and as you as you know i'm sure once you do it you get more into it and you think i could do this as well you know this yeah. is not <laughs> this is not rocket science. I want to talk to interesting people around the world, especially me, because as I look out my window, I'm looking out across the Amalfi coast. I can see Capra in the distance. It's in the south of Italy where I am. It's beautiful. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah um, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, I'm trying to make you jealous here. Yes, you are. But you know, where you are in you know in Sweden, you've got all the culture. So I miss all these interesting conversations, you know, and these, you know, stimulating. I mean, the guy in the, the guy in the piazza, you know, they're not really, unless you're talking about Juventus or, or <laughs> but politics. That's, that's in Juventus is from Turin, is it? Yeah, but they're, they're popular all over Italy or Napoli. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not talking about football or politics, forget about it. So yeah, yeah. Okay. for stimulating conversation, I can speak to people like yourself now have a really in-depth conversation, explore, change ideas. But, you know, I needed a, because there are many, many podcasts, as I'm sure you're so aware. So thank you, Zoom. Yeah, thank you, Zoom. Big shout out. Yeah. And so I needed an idea, you know, who's going to come on and talk to me, a schmuck in yeah. the south of Italy. I need an idea. And because when you launch a podcast, that's the thing, isn't it? You, didn't need, you need a niche, like this is Mind the Shift. And we're always talking about, you know, the, the change in consciousness and the science and religion. So you've got your angle and, you know, oh, oh, that's a great angle. And I need an idea like that. So I thought, you know, I'm a songwriter. I write songs about people. One plus one is not really a unique, it's not really a big shift, but yeah. no one else has done it, which is kind of whoa, crazy, no? Yeah. So, so it's called Pod Songs and you, yeah. you make you you create you write one song for each uh episode that you that you exactly record. Yeah, yeah right yeah and it's also not only you sometimes there are other musicians on the podcast well, as well uh, interviewing people yeah, yeah i did the first 100 episodes myself and wow. you know I, 
I did that in a year and I got kind of tired of the sound of my own voice. And also because it's such a wonderful experience, I really want to share it with other musicians. So now I'm retiring as the singer songwriter. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I'm just going to be the host. Looking a little bit old there. So maybe it's time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now it's just other singers coming on, interviewing their heroes. Okay. Um, songs for good. I'm trying to focus on. So not just people who've, because I interviewed many interesting people but they're promoting their book or their their tv show or whatever now i'm trying to focus more on songs for good so because those are the most satisfying ones yeah campaigners activists caught good causes you know okay yeah so uh have, have you been interviewed yourself many times as well like this i mean apart from what you were mentioning before you know the, the promotion interviews that you did when you gave out your albums but during this podcast period have, have you been interviewed like this before yeah i've had a few i'm trying to do okay. a few do, more do, because you make song do you make songs also when you yourself <laughs> have been interviewed no i'm afraid no, not this no. song this interview will not you know, but you never know i mean maybe i'm inspired afterwards but or, because or, so that means that i have to make uh to to write a song about this interview then that would be great i would look really <laughs> that would be a, that, would that would be a, be a challenge idea. for me yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for over a year now, I think it's one year, a year and a half, and I'm a journalist from the beginning. So, I mean, okay. to me, it wasn't, I came in from another angle into this. Sure, sure. It was not that, I mean, it wasn't that very far-fetched for me to, to do this, although I was mainly a newspaper journalist, so I mm-hmm. did, I was mainly writing articles, but uh, I mean, I had I had done some radio, TV stuff as well, so... But you came in from the musician uh, point of view, so to speak. Mm. So it was a little bit more diff- different for you, perhaps, to, to, to do this, this interviewing thing. That's yeah, but wonderful. Well, no, it's strange no one's done it before. It's strange that, that I'm the only one doing this. So there is another one called, um, there's another one started afterwards called Lightning Bugs with yeah. um, this pianist, uh, Ben Folds, and he's doing it now as well. So there is there is two that I know of me and him. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell us about a few of the most salient episodes or sure. You... Well, I mean, as soon as I started, before it even launched, I just wrote out to people because you know, going back to the idea interview, because all the the, the number one podcasts, you know, Joe Rogan, London Real, yeah, um, Jordan Peterson, they were all interviewing the same people, you know, these people are doing the rounds. And, you know, they're telling the same stories. Yeah. So I thought, obviously, if I interview those people as well, I will also interview famous people as a way to become famous. But they didn't really share the articles that they shared those songs once or twice. But, you know, even before I launched, I reached out to people like Alan Dershowitz, you know, O.J. Simpson's lawyer, you know, and had him on the show. You know, he's, he's Donald Trump's lawyer as well. And, you know, it, he's just chatting to me and I haven't even launched the show. So people like oh. that. Yeah, and Lawrence Krauss, the scientists, and uh, many scientists. Um, uh, yeah, I've got this. Uh, I'm up to a hundred. Well, I've listened so. to a few of your songs, of course, before before this interview. So, uh, I mean, it's impressive that you have made so many. I mean, a hundred over over a hundred songs now. Then, because you had you have launched a hundred episodes or over. Yeah, over we, we, uh, well, I'm in various stages because it takes six months to make the song because I have a production team here in Italy. So I'm interviewing all the time periodically. You know, I do, I do three interviews a week yeah. for a pit for a period. And then I take a break, you know, in the summer here in Italy, we're, we're pretty quiet, but then I go to the production team. So I record the song to the click track and I take it to the band, the musicians. And in, and in one day they do three songs. They add on all the instruments. Okay. So, because it's a full production song, so there's a pipeline, so to speak. Where there's a pi- exactly. It's not. It's not just I go to market with the veg, fruit, and vegetables. They've. Been, I've, I planted the trees a long time ago, and I've been cultivating okay. the soil. Okay. And it, yeah. So there's a whole yeah pipeline. It's an industrial yes podcast. But still, I mean, it's very impressive, and I've, I've listened to a few of, of them, of course, before this interview, and they're they're good. I mean, I like I like the the style. Thank it's you. Being a songwriter, but it, but they're 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 different individually different uh i mean it's not exactly the same kind of music no no we do we do reggae rock yeah yeah, yeah. folk oh, it depends on the song depends on the uh on the on the guests so we we change it and, and with also your with, permission i will of course insert one of your songs in this please episode. go ahead yeah maybe yeah. 
towards the end. We'll see. The viewers and listeners will know where where I have put it. So, sure, I'll great. Do that. Excellent. I've listened to the one. I think pretty recent one that is called the Mother Earth. Earth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very nice. Thank uh, you. Very nice. And it was after you had interviewed a woman who was an astrologer. Yep, Christy Blaze. Yep, Christy yep. Blaze. Yeah, she, that was interesting. Some thoughts depress you, like what you had and lost, like we ever really possess anything, and even know who we are. Think of your ancestors. Do you even know their names? They've been blown away and are floating with the stars. They are just specks of dust here upon the mother. We owe her all of our love. And then uh, <clears throat> songs inspired by Eckhart Tolle and Bernardo Castro. So I, I was wondering, did you did you actually interview those people? Yeah, I interviewed Bernardo. Not not yet. Um, Eckhart. Eckhart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's on the list. <laughs> I have to get him sometime. Yeah, I've I've been thinking about interviewing Eckhart, uh, Bernardo Castro. Eckhart, I haven't even considered because he's so big. I think it's going to be very difficult to get a hold of him. Uh, yeah, but you, present, you have this present. niche where you make a song, and maybe that's easy, it's easy easy to you to 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 pitch people who are even you know famous because they find it kind of intriguing that you make a song. Yeah, it's a, it's a definitely an incremental thing. So once you've had so many people on the show, you know what it's like. You you put them on the bio, and yeah. so also with, now with the bands. So every week I'm having a guest musician, and each time I get more famous musicians. So. And they will bring in more famous guests because the musicians were sh are sharing the whole process, you know, that how they write the song, the tweeting about, you know, posting Instagram, posting the song. So all the time I'm having, you know, 50 musicians a year all promoting the podcast and then to 50 guests. Hopefully, pod song should grow yeah. using this formula. That's great. So this all started. When well, you said it started because of the, the pandemic, which I don't know what it is, but you said that there was a pandemic out there. But uh, as, a, as far as I understand, if we go even a little bit further back, it all started when you had a burnout. Yes. Yeah. Well, tell us about that. I mean, what what happened? Why did you get it, and where did you get it, and at what stage in your life did you get it? Well, I grew up in England, and I moved to Amsterdam when I was in my twenties, and I worked there. I was a writer, copywriter. And I had started a copywriting business, also a fashion designer, um, did many things. Amsterdam's a great city. Yeah, but, I, I was um, there just the other week. It was I heard on your fantastic. podcast. Yeah, I checked yeah. some episodes. Yeah. And um, yeah, a lovely city, beautiful place to grow up. But I got a, you know, a bit too stimulating. So I went um, and I was playing touring musician as well. And I ended up and had a, I broke up with my girlfriend at the time. And so I went traveling around the world for two years. And I just sold everything. Just went traveling and had. Uh, you became a nomad, a nomad, basically. Yeah, I was a super troubadour. <laughs> so I would sing songs about where the places I've been and the people I met, and I'd go from place to place playing house concerts. So I'd sleep in people's living room oh. and give a, a concert for their friends in return for a place to sleep. You know, sometimes it was forty, fifty people. You know, so we'd have a, a house party, and I'd play these play these songs and stories, tell stories. Um, all around the world. So couch surfing helped me get started that website. That's fantastic. So where did you go? How far did you go? I went to about 40 different countries or drove all around America, Canada, uh, all, every, almost every country in Europe. And um, I went to New Zealand. I cycled around New Zealand, cycled up around this Australia. And I went, sailed around the other half of Australia from Cairns to Darwin. And then went across to Bali, bought a tandem in Bali with my girlfriend, um, who I'd been traveling with, met, met my girlfriend on the road. We traveled around Asia, and then she had to come back to Italy. So where I am now, um, we're still together, very happy. Okay, so love brought you to Italy. 
yeah she said come back to italy and i said oh, okay you know i had enough That's so nice. I, was, but I, I burnt out sent me onto the road because i'd had enough of that and then i got burnt out on the burnout of the road right because <laughs> playing shows all the time and traveling's you know i'm discombobulated i'm i'm you know over over spent over span love that word yeah <laughs> discombobulated so I, yeah. yeah okay i understand so i came back to italy and i've been here ever since although i did go quite a few times to india and i've yeah i was gonna ask about that of course we're gonna delve into those things because uh as far as i understand you you um your visit to india was pivotal for you in your in, in yeah your yeah because i got because i got very into ayurveda the indian medicine yeah when i was trying to cure my lifestyle health problems which were brought on by my lifestyle you know so that was way back in amsterdam even and would you say that you had had a very materialistic lifestyle before yeah, you had yeah okay yeah yeah um i tried chinese medicine as well i knew it wasn't i didn't need a pill i needed some you know and then i got also into meditation and vipassana vipassana meditation um so you know i think it goes body mind spirit now you you once you fix first you fix the body or you work on it you know you build that up and then once you've you've got that first you fix your life up and once then you've got your yeah you've got your material aspects your money and your you're happy and that then you do your body then you do your mind you know and you this thing happens naturally and we you know you meditate and you you get your, your mindfulness in order and then your then you can just start to develop spiritually i think in that's how it happened to a few of my friends and i'm sure it's not like that with everyone but uh, for me certainly but they say that uh, you know mind and spirit goes together of course but you you don't have it might be just it could just as well be that if you if you understand what you are at your core that, that what the essence of you is and you're fine with that and you don't uh, strive for anything material <laughs> generally apart from maybe i mean having food to eat every day so it's, then then things will on um, life will unfold very effortlessly for you if you have yeah, that I mindset think- from the beginning so then you then you might you might be able to achieve all these I mean, material things, not not to get rich or anything, but the things that you need to lead a good life. So it could start in that other end as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I used to think also, but I have some other opinions about it, which we can go into later about that order, that uh, what in the spiritual aspect, but probably that should come later in the conversation. Yeah. It's, um, so yeah, I was in India and I had, um, I was having this very amazing Ayurvedic treatments these oils on the body which very pranic heavy um and i could do very long breath holds you know i was doing some yoga and i could breathe in and out for a minute and a half you know you know it was very 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 powerful medicine and um pranic and i started waking up at 333 and having these synchronicities every night 333 and mm. and i was starting seeing kundalini everywhere and so i started reading up about it and um kundalini kundalini staying behind a kundalini center I read a book about it and i found this teacher online through youtube and so i'm in india you know and i discover an american teacher you know so it's kind of it's kind of crazy you expect to meet at least meet someone like sad guru you know and yeah. someone in robes but um met this family uh, came across this guy in um in um in america and he's a so he was doing pranayama mantra and all these yogic practices from three years old, you know, he's born into a yogic family in, mm. uh, in Florida. And yeah, he's super, he studied all the ancient teachings and, you know, the occult and mysticism. And he really gave me a crash course in, in mysticism and metaphysics. This wasn't George King, was it? No, this was Nehemiah Davis, this big black guy in America. He's Okay. It's a very different to Dr. King, but he introduced me to Dr. King. So in English, yeah, Dr. King, but he passed away uh, some 20 years ago or something. Like yeah, that. exactly. Yep. Oh. So I'm in India learning about an Englishman via an American guy. And so it's, it's kind of <laughs> like, I think sometimes spiritualism and awakening your higher self is like equivalent to landing a, a plane in the, in a Pacific Island. You know, you've got to, it's difficult to find hard to get there. And when you come into the approach to land, it's very difficult to to get through your conscious mind to convince you these things you know you have to have all these signposts have to be there and we all reject things 
very quickly we have these these very strong likes and dislikes so to convince ourselves we have to have this very slow awakening in some people you know it's you don't just get an angel in front of you, you know it's our mm. consciousness has to slowly unfold and this is certainly the way it was for me coming from a very materialistic um uh launch pad yeah yeah so but but it happened to you when you were there in india you yeah. uh, did you, would you would you express it as if as you had your awakening when you were there or it was um i was listening to an episode on your show with um is it graham the singer yeah, pemberton, pemberton graham pemberton yeah yeah and it was the same as him very logical no um no bright lights and uh and fancy okay and, and super beings just a very like okay this is logical this oh this is how i understand spirituality this is it makes, makes sense yeah, yeah yeah exactly like that on a, in a cerebral way and now i'm doing the practices so i've been given all these mantras and um pranayama to slow because i used to think <clears throat> i used to think psychic powers were you know you're born with them you know there's people who are special and but it's not like that it's that we're very involved and people from last lives have these psychic powers because of their good karmas and they're, they've awakened them in the other Life. So with pranayama, you know, and um, mantra, you clean the nadis, and you open up, and you you get these uh, these psychic senses, which are extensions extensions of the physical senses. But we've we've blocked them through our wrong thought and action. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. I th I think many people know what mantras are, but pranayamas. Can you explain a little bit what that is? Yeah, it's a restraint of the breath. So you're holding the breath because. Um, when the prana comes into you through food and water that's you the know, life force the life force the... yeah universal life force um so when you hold the breath the um the prana can't come in but you know nature abhors a vacuum it has to come in somehow so it comes in through the psychic centers and it forces gradually because in most people the chakras are a dormant above the the base center and mm. um, the sex center so you gradually awake these and it's a very it's a it's a slow and steady way there are many kundalini yoga ways to wake up you know it's actually if you really want to force them open it it can be done very quickly but it's very dangerous and yeah in what way is it dangerous well you could end up dying dying or not being able to walk or Okay. People have had a spontaneous rise of kundalini and it doesn't come up from shumna and they don't they don't have the ability to con concentrate on a leaf for eight hours at a stretch without any other thought coming into their mind. Mm. Don't have the ability to control it because as kundalini rises up, it's it's a it gives you these cities, these these abilities, but you have to prove that you are you are you're gonna use them for good, you know, you have to have control of them. So if you do get these powers, but you have a, you know, a monkey mind, grasshopper mind, and you're not going to, you know, you know, you have all these cravings and all this, you know, you're going to use them in a bad way. Then it has to be, it has to be these natural safeguards. The design is put in the system, you know. Mm. Okay. So take, take it slow and easy. That's, that's the recommendation. <laughs> yeah. And the best way is uh, selfless service to others. That's the natural way to, to do it. Yeah. You know, you do these practices to help you to be a better service to other and helps with spiritual healing. But selfless service to others is then is the new yoga. Karma yoga is the way, new yoga. It's always it's the best way to do it. And if you look at through the great spiritual teachers, they've always through their actions. You know, not just sitting in a cave for your mm. whole life trying to get some powers, or so you can leave this life cycle and leave all the other schmucks behind. Mm. But you know, get your hands dirty helping others well that's perhaps for some to do that to sit in caves for years and to to be i mean that's their perhaps their task that they're doing this to to be an example for others i mean not to be an example for for others to do exactly the same thing but to to show that it's possible to do it and that you can raise your vibration or your consciousness by doing that but i i understand i mean i totally agree with what you're saying i don't think mm -hmm. it's <laughs> There is any point in in eight billion people sitting in caves uh, for ten years because then we wouldn't. I mean, human humankind wouldn't really be. There wouldn't be any point 
in us being here doing things at all. So, yeah, that goes back to your earlier point about um, which you could probably slide into about you know the spiritual aspect and you know being we're here to be of service. We're here to learn. You know, spirituality is in a, in a practical. We're in a classroom. Yeah. You know, you you can't learn metaphysics until you've mastered physics, which is strange for some. You know, people. So many spiritual people just want to be in the bottom of the garden with the fairies, or yeah. meditating, or they don't think of it being a spiritual way that you can go out and get a science degree, or you can start a business, or you you know you get. They've not really. It's kind of a divorced. There's not this connection. You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's a very good good way of putting it and it's very interesting and perhaps that's why it is also it feels very compelling and it feels very very um uh, how should i put it uh, authentic when people i mean scientists are are talking about some kind of spiritual awakening and and the spiritual uh, aspects of things like you know quantum physicists and all those david bowen right, yeah. and, and those people when you hear these those people talking about these things, it feels very much like uh, grounded and and based in something, yeah, else than just as you say fairy fairies and yeah. Because I don't know, I, mean, I haven't got the numbers, but you know when the the way that even if they do believe the Big Bang, for example, it's just when you talk about physics, you always talk about that. You know, if it if it happened at a at a point zero 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 slightly slower this wouldn't have happened. And if it happened 0.0000 slightly faster, we wouldn't be here. So, yeah, yeah. you know, and this consciousness thing, they haven't really got a handle on is kind of. <laughs> they kind of don't know. They haven't really the got a handle now. on that. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. Okay. Well, but when you were in India, going back to that now did you did you live in an ashram in a way or, or how did how did no I, I found this doctor and he was an amazing doctor he could um so he studied with a guru and he was also born into one of the families so they you know you learn to say you know recite the sutras and you can you get the whole of the medicine book in your head and you can tell you take that everything's with the pulse so you put the three fingers on there and you can tell what you had for breakfast three weeks ago and <laughs> you know the heartbeat of a baby and i mean it's incredible so so he could tell everything and then he does these special treatments which uh he makes all the medicine himself and <clears throat> i mean they they it's, it's very credible things they can do i mean a whole episode just about ayurveda but i was lucky to find a good one because a lot of it is just uh you know it's a lot of spas where the money is and mm. health retreats but he was you know, the, the good ones are still uh you know they have cures for cancer using heavy metals and you know mercury and arsenic and things like that which you which have you know had amazing results and they've been using it for 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 centuries so hmm. just to pick one thing so does it have, does it actually cure cancer yeah yeah it does yeah so what does so, the western science know about that well i i saw a doctor's entry with one of the doctors and he said um he said he was just going on on, on about um the lack of curiosity in 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 the medicine in the, in the medical industry and how um you know he'd cured one woman's one doctor's child but the doctor never even came to see him mm -hmm. to inquire why you know how it's so yeah that's bad was it also in india that you discovered the uh, the uh, Ethereus society yeah so this was by an ami davis i i learned about dr george king who was a um so he was a Western master of yoga. Yeah. And he so, founded this Ethereum Society in the 50s. Yeah, this Ethereum Society. So so he was, he was he started in the, he was a conscious, conscientious objector in the war. He didn't fight. He, uh, he was, uh, he put out the fires in England when the Blitz, you know, when the, the V2s came over and things okay. like that. Um, and then after the war, he did uh, advanced yoga practices. So what, what we were talking about with the Pranayama and the Mantra, for, for on average 10 hours a day for 10 years wow or eight, eight yeah. hours a day for 10 years like a zen buddhist almost yeah so this is this is in england after the war i mean how many how many yoga centers do you think there were then i mean how many <laughs> so so he was so he was psychic then and so he did all these powers and he was able to raise 
kundalini all through the chakras up to the crown chakra and when you do this once it's enlightenment when you do it um i might be messing up this exactly but precisely but uh the next is a cosmic consciousness mm. um when you've these these very high experiences but when you can do it repeatedly many many times um you achieve ascension which is what jesus did you know that uh so you because actually jesus was also a, a yoga student and in those lost years he studied in tibet mm. um so he was a master of yoga as well well there are different different uh, different opinions about where he actually was during those lost years but i mean i hear i, I interviewed lars mool danish uh, mysticist mystic, okay. mystic <laughs> uh, who said that he was with the essenes or in egypt as well i've heard and in egypt yeah so i mean who knows but anyway i'm I'm not gonna well he definitely had he definitely learned some stuff i mean he was of not course just... yes yes i'm convinced that yeah uh, that also but anyway <laughs> so so because when you look through the yoga i mean jesus was not the first person to walk on the water he's not the first person to raise the dead not if you look in the yoga in the eastern this is these are normal these are things that many you know i don't know if you've read autobiography of a yogi um these kind of books but there's oh. many these are these are cities that you get and you know you can learn it if you 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 can levitate if you do 15 years maybe mantra pranayama in a cave you could you can make yourself very light and there's these videos of monks doing it on um on youtube um so it's not it is a it is a thing you know so yeah. but these are kind of tricks that these are not the real you're supposed to deny every once you get something you're supposed to deny it and then you get that and you go up and you do the next one and then you deny it and you don't use it you know once you've mastered something you don't use it uh -huh. you, then you move on to the next level okay so okay. you don't want to just pursue these tricks we're here to be of service to humanity it's yeah, not yeah. that you're supposed to learn how to walk on the, gra the grass Total you know, humbleness uh, towards all these this knowledge. yeah but it's there's there is a, there is an actual science to it that you mm. you take the energy that you would have used because you use this energy going out you take that you keep that in and then it raises the kundalini still higher and opens a higher petals of a higher chakra <clears throat> okay so so, so please go ahead. yeah well ethereus the ethereus society then and, and and george king and what he he founded here and what he taught uh is, is centered around yoga as you yeah. say as you, as you explain here and it's, it's also centered around extraterrestrial life and uh, extraterrestrial uh, beings being here yeah. and 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 us so the having the ability to 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 reach out to them so yeah what is that all about and uh so this could get that's... a little crazy and that's what i'm talking about with this pacific island you know that i was introduced to it gradually through um through these lectures so where to start so so dr king so he's doing he achieved you know he so he became a yoga master so once you have these once you get higher and higher up you just because he was physically in india india a yoga teacher such as shivananda can who could you know go out of his body and project himself to london and teach dr king greater techniques and greater so he had learnt you know he learned incredible things and he was so he was a, he was an ascended master how maha maha um so he was on the level with the greatest so so he became the voice and he could he could go into samadhi in the two and a half minutes that's when you raise kundalini in its entirety up to the crown okay. chakra and he could so he goes into trance because a normal medium the way a medium works is you get someone on your level you know when you talk to someone on the other side you get someone on you who you can communicate with which is kind of common sense no yeah you 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 get someone with whom whom you can communicate with who you're on the same level you know you don't get someone up higher because also as you go higher and higher because simply the it's like taking your toaster and trying to cl climbing up the, the the electrical pole and trying to plug it into the mains you know because there's so much energy to come through so yeah, i understand so for him to communicate with more advanced beings he had to he went into you know incredible to go into somebody like this 
and he could see these um these bars in front of him and he hold held them against his uh i think it was the throat chakra and then he could they could speak through him you know so this is equivalent of millions of volts you know this is like being in a power station mm. so they could communicate through him so that he was a channel and he became a voice for these teachings so he channeled so he channeled uh, the nine freedoms which is a book about so so the theory is it gives a cosmic message so it tells us it gives us a little more information about what happens after because you know when i was into buddhism and you know the eastern teachings you don't really have an idea what happens after ascension do you i don't, I don't know if you've you know much about the, the eastern techniques well i know that uh, in buddhism for instance and also hinduism to some extent it's it, it's not very much talk about life after death it's more like the uh, the goal is to to uh, uh what's the word um just uh i mean get out of this uh illusion right. this bloody in. hellhole yeah 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 material illusion this bloody hellhole and that's it and that's nirvana and then we, they don't talk very much about what's what's happening after that and if there are more right. further levels or so but uh, uh so this is the thing with the mystery schools and it's always been the way you know you protect the secrets and mm. and also in uh, in the vedas and in they talk about these other realms that you can go to and it's all very abstract and i think i had the kind of idea that you know when you die you're you're, you're a bubble floating around there a soul and when you when you become a buddha you know when you 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 merge back into nirvana and you you don't have to recycle you don't have to die anymore live and die anymore you kind of merge back into the one yeah so apparently that's not that so <laughs> well it's it's uh, that might be the end goal but then i mean if you're in nirvana never have to uh, incarnate or or be any other any being at all then you're a god i guess then you're a source exactly that's what so there we are that's what that's what commonly is accepted yeah yeah that's that would i would say that you were spot on yeah but, but on the way there on the way there you 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 have several journeys to make and uh and and your soul should grow and all that i mean there are there are thousands of different ways of putting it but it's basically the same idea that people have Right. There are yeah. realms yeah. and levels that you go through, and then maybe you get. Sometimes you have to go back and be physical and be physical and be physical thousands of times in order to to grow and to learn things because you didn't get it last time, so you might get it this time. And then time doesn't exist, of course, also. So yeah, it's 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 a relative thing. We conceive it here as time, yeah. we perceive it here as time, but uh, it's actually happening simultaneously. Everything, but that's very difficult to grasp for a human being on Earth. Okay, I 100% agree. With you, so that's what I thought. But then there is these new teachings which give us we've reached this level of maturity. Now we can accept these new ideas. So we're in reincarnation, which is an unconscious thing. But after, once we've left this, there is incarnation. And you, once you have achieved, learned all the lessons in this classroom where we are now, you can go on to other classrooms, okay. which are on other planets. Yeah. So you are a physical being there. So because when you when you die, think of the electromagnetic spectrum. There's there's physicality at every level of, of different levels of consciousness and light. So when we die, we go to another realm, which is exactly here, but just at a different frequency. Uh, yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's six above and four below. And these are where we go to the astral, and then we come back, and then we go there, and then we come back. And is it that that's where we are when we dream, or you do project when you dream? Yeah, in a in, are we in, in the astral realm when we dream? Sometimes, sometimes you're just dreaming, and sometimes you're on the astral. Okay. Project unconsciously. It, it depends. Um, so, so we're in two two cycles of re, of incarnation. So we have we have seven bodies. Um, when we die, three of them here they die, and then we go and live on the astral. And then you come back here, but you, it's at this. I could be under an ocean there on another plane of existence. I know people that are on astral projection, and they flop out of their body. In through it, they go. You go through a different chakra. That's why there's different chakras. Where the base chakra is, um, is the base of the spine, and then you can project to higher realms through the chakras, or down below to the lower realms hmm. through the chakras through the legs. <laughs> so, so they're right here. It's not that you go to heaven is somewhere up higher in here. They are slightly higher. You do look go out. You have astral projection. You do go slightly up, 
mm. if you go to a higher realm, but but they're just in a physical, in like the lower realms are in a physical, a darker, they're all physical. And the lower realms are even more physical because it's such a, it's such a dark place, you know? So you hear stories of people who've done astral projection and they go to these other realms, which are right here. They're not dimensions. We li- we exist in seven dimensions because, because think about it. 3d yeah. is height, length, and breadth. Yeah. The, f- the fourth dimension is time. Yeah. It's a measurement. Yeah. And the and the 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 fifth dimension is motion. Everything is this in motion, and then um, mind and will. So even if you project astrally, you're still existing in seven dimensions. We're in a seven dimensional. So there are other realms. There's a there's a confusion with the terminology there. Yeah, it, it is a bit confusing when you say, that, but it it does make sense. But I haven't thought of the the dimensions in that way before. Yeah. Because uh, well, well, these are some of the teachings. So, what Doctor Channel, Doctor King channeled a lecture, you know, about yeah. the seven dimensions of creation. So, and you go to the sun. There's many more dimensions on the sun. So, but anyway, so so you go to another planet, mm. which is apparently cloud and dust, mm. at, but it's at, at our frequency. It's cloud and dust. Mm-hmm. If you go to a higher realm, there's cities and temples and spaceships yeah, and yeah because they're at a different frequency of vibration of the electromagnetic spectrum. Mm. So this is a key concept, how, how UFOs and reincarnation are linked. And both of these two areas are very important to understand because there's so much testimonial about reincarnation. And if you study it logically and you read yeah. about it, yeah. there's so much evidence. And you can put someone in prison with a testimony for... And, and same with UFOs. There's so many sightings, you'd just be a fool not to believe in those as well. So, mm. the, in these, and they're linked. You know, they're in, they're in because of this consciousness existing at different frequencies of matter. So. Yeah, I know the about these fa- fascinating studies that they've they've done at the University of Virginia that you might mm. be familiar Definitely, with. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And it's like, as you say, it's it's. I mean, it's just compelling. It's uh, birthmarks on the body, you yes. know, memories, and, and five-year-old children who t- talk yeah. about lives in other countries, which they would. There's no, there's no possibility that they would know about those. All right, so details. so so you got it. Reincarnation, then, what happens? You know, so we're here to learn. We're evolving, and then you're seeing, thinking about UFOs, two and two together. When you meditate on this enough, mm. maybe we evolve to drive those things later you know so it's us but at a later stage yeah some of them maybe not we're just contacting ourselves (laughs) from another dimension no because there are all the planets and all the every other planet in the you know every other planet is inhabited yeah you know you think we're the only planet and they're looking in other all these other people are receiving transmissions for the andromeda galaxy and i've heard a you know all these other psychics and people saying i'm i was i'm a star i'm a light worker come from the another star millions of what about the people from you know mars and venus and yes, saturn yes. so this is a lot more logical once you get into it it's not such a crazy <laughs> yeah and it's it's it seems a bit easier to contact you know beings on mars than than beings in the, the pleiadian yeah. constellation so dr king because this is going back to religion so everything is about karma karma is is really key here. Mm. There are lords of karma and everything. You, why can't they, they just land among us and, and help us? You know, It's all to do with karma because our karma is so bad. Um, and it's, it, to, to, to do someone's karma is like you going into your children's school and doing all their homework for them, sitting there and doing all their homework all the mm. time. Mm. They're not, it's not going to have no benefit to them. So they, then there's these strict laws for karma, and this is how reincarnation works. You know, this why children are born, you know, with deformities perhaps, and you know how the how we were born into these things and getting our lessons. So karma is key, mm. and the the, the 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 karma of humanity is so bad is because we used to live on a planet called uh, Lemur, um, uh, Maldek, which is now the asteroid belt. Because yes, I read about that in, in okay. on, the, on the website from the uh, Ethereum Society's website. Yeah. So there's this law, uh, uh, Bode's law. Every planet is double the distance from the sun, and if you check this out, then there's this big dotted strip, and so we we blew up Maldek, and then we were reincarnated. Mother Earth uh, accepted us. We came here, and 
you know, we many, many lives. And then we had a civilization called Lemuria. So we discovered we probed the atom again. Mm. Big problem. Earth had to shift on our axis, destroyed everything, starting again, coming out the swamp, 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 swamp. Uh, uh, Atlantis again. Mm. Bang. Bang. Uh, turns on the axis. This is why the coal is under there. So is it third time lucky now then? This is the last time, yes. <laughs> there is... Um, <laughs> There's a, a karmic law. There's, there's so many times that this can happen, and um, yeah, we have now have the the Earth had a primary initiation. She received all this energy, and mm. now we've coming to the end of this this cycle. So, yeah. doomsday scenario. Yeah, so. but I, yeah, this is very deep. <laughs> this is more mm. profound than than I go normally. It go, we haven't even started yet. <laughs> we haven't really even started. I mean, I mean, I've read about these things also, but I haven't, I haven't studied them so profoundly and deeply. But I've, I've been into, you know, spiritual things since I was a child. My, my mother was very spiritual, and um, she became a priest in the, in the, in the Swedish, <clears throat> the Church of Sweden, which was a bit, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but she was also into astrology and things like that. So I learned a lot from her. Uh, where was I going with this? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, uh, so, so going back to the Lemuria and Atlantis and yeah. and third time. Third time. <laughs> so 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 Doctor King had to come because Jesus was the master for the um, the Piscean age. Going back yeah. to astrology, he yeah. was the master of love, Pisces. Mm -hmm. So Doctor King, um, because of the karma, so they can't just interfere. But karma, if they're born through the womb of a woman. Mm. They have, they can take on, they can do things karmically. If um, so, Jesus, you know, came through the womb of a woman. He was from Venus. Um, you know, it, the Bible is a UFO book. You know, the the star of Bethlehem, and it's the same with Buddha. There was three stars in the sky, and there's all these, um, you know, speaking to people on clouds as well. The Krishna and flying through. So this mm, is all, mm, mm. Um, you know, ancient alien stuff. The CD yeah. series. Yeah. Um, but when so when they're what they can they can leave their consciousness and they they're born through the womb of a woman. Mm. They incarnate into this cycle. Then they do these yoga practices and they raise Kundalini and then they they can act as a master here with karmic permission, so to speak. So this is the way they've done it. They founded these great religions. So they all have a mission. So the, the, the mission of Jesus was the teachings and the um, uh, the healings and all that stuff. There could have, anyone could have done that, you know, and many, many masters. He was here for a mission. Did He had to die karmically at a specific mm -hmm. time and for achieve a karmic manipulation. So if you look at before and after Jesus and what he, which part of the world he affected, you know, the Western part and the teachings and how the, the, the huge effect he had on society. I mean, but we wouldn't have monogamy without Jesus Christianity, you know, we'd have all these, these, these horny Viking men running around, you know, mm -hmm. so one wife, one woman, mm -hmm. one wife, that was just from Christianity. Um, you know, he replaced the Roman empire with, you know, in the same place with the, the Catholic church. Okay. Oh, that went bad. Yeah. But the <laughs> principle was, he was, the idea was there. Uh, so this huge karmic manipulation. So he he did that, and he had he engineered his own death at that specific point in time to achieve yeah. a huge karmic manipulation. And so Dr. King had the same thing. He was here. He was to do these teachings and to receive these the the nine freedoms, which is a book as well, which tells us what happens after the um, as, after cosmic consciousness and ascension. We go on to live on life on other planets, then Saturn, mm. then we live on the sun. So this is a very evolved treaties but his his main mission he was like a jedi he was a he was um a, a, like a commando so he he astrally projected to the lower realms and he took uh he was involved in the armageddon that was foretold he was one of the three lights there were three adepts who took on the forces of darkness in an in a projected form and transmuted the um the evil forces that we had accumulated because when you die yeah. your consciousness doesn't get split up until after the astral cycle so all of the um 
all you know that's what in think about it those lower realms there are there are the hitlers there are the there are the satans there are the the the, the terrible people mm. in still in there and they're improving because time happens on the highest realms very slowly and also as above as below in the lowest realms time happens on a slower speed and there are they are studying down there they're doing mystery schools they're also doing pranayama and mantra and they are extending their lifespan and having a negative effect on the physical realm and so there was a there was a karmic time that there had to be a cleanup down there and be, you couldn't it has to be somebody in mm-hmm. the human body mm-hmm. doing the astral projection for karmic reasons so he was engaged in this 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 armageddon this this global war mm. in an astral form in the 60s okay the armageddon that didn't happen on this plane but exactly ha- happened. Ha- happened there yes. so he he helped it he helped uh, us i mean uh, yeah he helped earth and, and and the world and humanity to to avoid yep. that armageddon exactly well, he did it was a huge war and it was yeah. it was a touch and go but he won and uh and yeah the flowering of human consciousness now we can now we've we're much in a much better position than we were so. okay yeah i recall now what i was going to ask you about before when i was ranting a little bit uh you said that mother earth accepted us when we had destroyed this other planet that's now the astro- uh, asteroid belt uh, so planets are also uh consciousnesses and beings so that's a thing to 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 realize yeah because But- Yeah. When you think about it, look as above as below. Mm. You and I are here, and you think of our history. There's the way that plants merge to form, maybe to form insects and consciousness. Because there's one consciousness. We're all one. You know. Yeah. All, but yeah. So the the divine has split itself up. Yes. And we're like, all like working. like Bitcoin. <laughs> we're like Bitcoin. Exactly. Yes, there's only one Bitcoin, and then there's more and more and more and more aspects. Very good. So we're all we're all here learning and working our way back as conscious gods. And consciousness merges through reincarnation. As we get onto, they say in the nine freedoms, Saturnian existence, we we find a people who we who we vibrate with perfectly, and we merge our consciousness with them to form a larger being, and we go on to greater service. And and the same, you go on to the sun, and then later, millions of millions of consciousness merging, we go on to form planets, which mm. are, you know, and then planets go on to form suns. And greater and greater and form form galaxies. solar systems, yeah. galaxies. So you look through the Hubble telescope and you're seeing these conscious beings, mm. billions of lives, trillions of quadrillions of lives more evolved than us. And so you know, then black holes coming together are probably mm. conscious beings merging back, and eventually we we go back into the to the one. Yeah. So, but it's it's just a but, lot. It takes a lot bigger than Nirvana. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, there's a, whole, there's a whole chain. But is it, uh, I mean, what we see when we look in the Hubble telescope is still a physical three-dimensional world. I mean, that's the only thing we can see, we can perceive with our senses here from Earth. Mm. So what we see is a, is, is a 3D universe, but in, in a way. But aren't there, I mean, you spoke about these dimensions in a, in a different way than I'm used to, but I'm I tend to see it as if, I mean... <laughs> There, there are different planes. There are different um, dimensions that mean that that the universe doesn't. I mean, if you're on a higher, in a higher dimension, the universe doesn't look as it does fr- from our perspective with our eyes. It, it looks completely different, or it doesn't even perhaps even look. It, it just is in a different way, and uh, things are going on in a different way, and 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 there is no physicality or anything on on those planes in those dimensions. When you're looking, when you look at it, they think of physics. They're looking for this dark matter and this dark energy, you know. And they think, well, so maybe they're looking for it in between the planets, you know, and where it is. But yeah. it's it's the planets because they have many realms. There's the energies concentrated inside them, you know. So there's there's so many more realms. There's hundreds of realms and thousands of realms, and but it's still there. There's still this physicality because the Earth is a being. So, but it has met all these sheaths and layers that we can't see. You know, mm-hmm. so the energy is constant. So you're looking for the energy, but you're standing. You're looking for this dark energy and dark matter, but you're standing right on it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe that, and I, yeah. This is actually actually what the the quantum physicists, the cutting edge ones of them, 
are saying that uh, I mean we're all immersed in this. It's it's just it's it's everywhere. It's yeah. Like you say dark energy is just what's uh, I mean the ninety nine point nine 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 whatever percent of of what constitutes an atom or a particle even is is that. Hmm. Uh, it, it's nothing really. It, or, I mean we we don't we we perceive it as nothing, but it's it's packed with energy. Hmm. So there's always you know these colors the mystics can see what we can't see you know so. Yes, if you evolve, you see uh, many fantastic things, but they would still have the same kind of map. You know, there's still the sun there on other realms, and there's still the earths. Okay. You know, so there's yeah, still yeah. that, but there's many more things that we are blind to. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, this is cool. I, I like this. <laughs> okay. Well, it's something different. It's at the very minimum, it's new. So, and that's the whole point. I mean, there's this, this, the theory society is tiny, you know, because Dr. King, he, you know, with all his knowledge and his, um, you know, if he wanted to start a, a, you know, a cult or he wanted to have a big church, he could have, you know, done it, but he was kept it very small. And you're not even allowed to hear the, the missions that I haven't, you know, until you're a member for two years and you've had this, you've taken an oath of secrecy. And so it's, it's a very, Mm -hmm. It's not publicized in the way that that other other organizations are, you know. So it's this. There's a couple of thousand members. It's tiny. You know? Yeah, sounds tiny. But I mean, he said that, and and many have said this that Jesus was was the uh, the one who was going to to um, convey this knowledge for the Piscean era, mm -hmm. the the age of Pisces. Uh, did did Dr. King see himself as the one to convey the knowledge of the age of Aquarius? Well, he channeled, one of the masters he channeled was the Master Jesus. So okay. we have an update to the Sermon on the Mount, the 12 blessings. So it's a it's the greatest tantric act you can do. It's a it's a it's a magic act. So you you do these 12 blessings and you progressively send out energy to higher and higher beings. Mm. And by karmic law, they send back a, a that energy but enhanced so it's like when you're doing reiki you know you put your hands on someone and you know spiritual healing they can as you develop you can send out a beam of energy yeah through your, your, your palm shack if you hold it against the mirror you can feel it and so like case you, parks and I, I interviewed a guy called case parks in the united states you, you should listen to him he's very cool he, he okay he has these frequencies in his hands and he heals people by doing this and he's just a he's just a cool dude from colorado anyway sorry oh i have to chat to him yeah so so you do this and then you bless progressively higher beings so you you send out energy to to the healers you send out energy to the to the peace workers and then to the then to the earth and then to the sun so and you get this energy back and then you send it out to mankind and then you get it you send out a blessing to a higher being the galaxy and then you get it back and you send it to so it's a metaphysical act and it's um so it's the it's the greatest so this to the master jesus he channeled these so it's it's the Sermon on the Mount, but it's the for the cosmic age. It's much yeah. more advanced. He also gave a new Lord's Prayer, many other teachings. So, you know, and this was in the fifties. Doctor King said he was channeling Jesus. Even now, you you think he's you think people call you a crackpot, but back then he was a very brave man. So yes, but absolutely. you know, yeah. but if you're if you're a Christian, you believe that Jesus ascended and he's still here forever. It's you know maybe not so hard to believe, you know. But it's, no, it's no, a, no, it's, it. it much of the Christian faith doesn't make sense really because it was, I mean, it was corrupted in the fourth century, of course, by the churchmen. So, uh, yeah, they but, took out reincarnation and yeah, many, many, many things like that. But, uh, do, do you think we are now at, at, on the cusp of the, the age of Aquarius, the, the famous age of Aquarius? Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, sure. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's what, what we make it you know it's, it's the age of service to others it's the age because dr king and you know, all you know i spoke to chrissy blaze who's an astrologer and she wrote a book about it. he he is the epistemy of the aquarian in his science because jesus said uh, science without god science without religion is the soulless wanderer of the night mm. this is in his new teachings received through dr king so there's this merging of science and religion and mm. so Dr. King had all these missions. He made radionic equipment so he can, so when you, like the person you were talking about sending out the healing energy, 
yeah. you put it into these batteries made of crystals and other precious metals and can release it when there's a a, um, a world crisis. He also collects the energy, sends it into the psychic centers of the Mother Earth. Um, all these other missions that the society is still performing in a very clandestine way, in a very, you know, quiet behind the scenes way, carrying on the missions, even though we, we don't have, an, nobody has access to these masters on the other worlds now because it, nobody's as once the voice is gone we, had, yeah. we just carry on the missions so so it's really science and religion science and religion science and spirituality yeah, yeah. Uh, graham pemberton i think said that religion and spirituality is the same thing to him i i tend to see a difference there but it doesn't really matter what we're yeah using yeah this. uh so another the other question that I forgot before was that um, I mean this uh, speaking about third time lucky that we, we humankind uh, created this this civilization called Lemuria maybe millions of years ago or hundreds of thousands of years ago. No, I have the years. timeline actually on my desktop. Yeah, yeah, it's a long, long time ago. It's not just like it's not just like uh, Atlantis was. Well, I you hear know. also that Atlantis and Lemuria were in, in were fighting against each other, but that, that's not that, that doesn't make sense then if Lemuria was here no millions of years ago. Yeah, no, there's um and Atlantis came later. Yeah, what's I've got the dates here. Does it, in the, the Kalpas. Does it fit called. with the, the the theories that Atlantis possibly was destroyed during this big cataclysm during during Younger Dryas, which was twelve thousand years ago or something like that? No, that was, it's, it's it's hundreds of thousands of years ago. Okay. No, because the Earth had to. Um, so that was something else then. If there yeah, was because because the other the planet was just the planet was destroyed for nuclear, but it couldn't happen karmically on this Earth. So the Earth had to within I think it's thirty six minutes the Earth can turn on our axis. It's the whole thing. So mm. that you're talking about seas four miles high, you know, yeah. just wiping everything as you t- yeah. as it turns in a, in a. It's just like a, a dog shrugging fleas off her back, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we can say goodbye to everything. Yes. Yeah. Happen. So then we had to do the whole. I mean, climate change. Again. Climate change is like a sneeze, then, compared to that. Yeah, it's also because the Earth has all these primary energies, so she now has to, she has karmically, she has to raise her vibration, so she does have to change because these, because the it was mal um, Adamic man was on this planet before us and their base chakra was the heart chakra so mm. all the realms below are are mutations so this is a is a um, an anomaly so it's just a temporary thing where this is why so did that happen by way of uh, extraterrestrial beings visiting earth i mean this is what you hear so, so well it's some places i mean the manipulation everything's everyone's in service working their way back so everyone's in service to those below them so it's not that god made the earth and that god well of course god made the earth it's not that in god is everything and god is everything and everyone and everything and infinitely more so but everything is in service to those below so the earth is in service to us and the earth was made by a lord of karma and you know, everything on the earth was made by, you know, I heard the bumblebee came from Jupiter or something like that. Or, <laughs> yeah. You know, the, everyone's okay. involved. Okay. You know, because if you look at the sci-fi movies, what they want to do is world design, you know, and things like that. And so all these other, we are, we are the um, amoebas compared to, you know, everyone else on the other planet because we're so involved, you know, yeah. we're so we're idiots. Yeah. So, you know they're all helping in these ways to get us through this so they're all in service to us so yes i'm sure the what you're saying all these different people were involved mm. you know mm. but they're all just working their way back to god working their way back to god but they were maybe they were they thought that they did a good thing but maybe it did, didn't really work well out they, no they're because they they're doing the per- because the lords of saturn because Everyone else answers to the lords of Saturn, the lords on the super, the perfects of Saturn. So mm. there's no such thing as on the other other planets that they, they don't have they don't have a parliament or they don't vote on things. They just mm. they are the perfects. So mm. Mm. 
we don't have the, everything if they say it is so it is so you okay know, that is the, yeah. that's the same and with we, like a, so there was a point to it and that there was yeah it had some purpose uh someday we'll know <laughs> but anyway to continue my que- continue my question let's say we had lemuria we had atlantis Human, humankind was destroyed once, twice, uh, and third time, lucky, uh, hopefully, <laughs> a third time we began uh, developing, evolving again on this planet, and now we are at this point. And my, I mean, one of the tenets of this podcast is that we are in a shifting time because the world or humankind really is integrating for the first time. And when I say for the first time, I mean, for the first time in recorded history, as we know it now, because I mean, there, there has been, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that there have been civilizations on earth before that are not told about in the mainstream curriculum uh, and schools and things like that, <clears throat> which is uh, really a scandal in a way, but uh, there are some explanations for that, I, I think, but still, uh, I'm not sure whether those civilizations encompassed the entire planet or not, mm-hmm. because in that case, this is the first time ever that humankind is fully integrated all over the, the globe, because we are now, as you know, we, we, we are able to contact any other human being on the other side of the planet in yeah, real yeah. time. That's a good point, yeah. More or less. So, which means, I think that does something to us, which means that we are... Uh, this is a very, I mean, a, a, an objective fact that shows that there is something very particular about this time. And some people don't recognize this. And I find it flabbergasting. I mean, I, I think I'm so surprised that people don't, don't, uh, I mean, take this more seriously. And they, sh- they should really, oh, you're, yeah, you're right. I mean, th- this has never happened before. So this is a big thing. But they say, oh, no, things will just happen like before. You know, history repeats itself. And it's like the Roman Empire. It's like mm-hmm. this and that and that. It's going to happen the same way again. And I say, no, I don't think so, because the situation is actually completely new now. So that, that I mean, ties in with this idea of us being on the cusp of the new age. Uh, I, don't, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I know my, my metaphysical teacher, Nehemiah, says that um, karmically, like I think after Atlantis, Africa and China or somewhere closed their doors and said, you know, cut themselves off and this happens repeatedly. And then, but then you suffer for that karmically later because you know you're supposed to have this worldwide so i don't know what to what extent atlantis was global or lemuris that's a great question i mean i do know that afterwards so so there is another planet behind the sun but mm-hmm. a younger planet mm-hmm. and according to the teachings that the people that are not ready to go there's a new master will come mm-hmm. the next master will come and he will come in he will not come through the womb of a woman he will come in full full aspects so his power will be greater than any armies all the combined armies of the world this is in the laws declaration dr king so sometime within the next i don't know a thousand years or something i don't know the timing it depends also always on karma mm. then those who do not answer will will reborn be reborn on a younger planet to go through further experience and to keep yeah. growing and developing and so, the rest those who have ascended they will they will stay on this planet which will ascend so we will ascend with the planet then I, don't I mean, know. I say we, but I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be there. But assuming that me and you will be there, exactly. I'm not sure of the. I'm not sure if you have to actually raise the Kundalini or if you just. I'm not sure of the, the mechanics of it, but um, yeah, those who are ready can stay behind. Yeah. Will be able to stay behind just because doing all these pranayama exercises as the ion because the ionosphere was put in place hmm. to to because this also shields a lot of. This is why people don't have the same psychic abilities they used to in Atlantis or Lemuris, the ionosphere. So this is coming down and gradually we, the people will not be able to survive unless we're of the right vibration. Yeah. Okay. So, so I don't know if that's going to happen like because you can't reproduce or I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, it could be very gentle. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know how. I don't know any of the mechanics of this. Either. No, the, the mechanics is, is is an interesting term in this context because uh, I've also been thinking. I, I mean, I've I've heard v- versions, varieties of this theme that that something is going to happen, that uh, the Earth is going to raise its vibration. But then you start thinking about how is it going to come about? I mean, mm-hmm. how, what's going to happen in physically and practically? We'll see. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, Anyway, this question is going to sound, I mean, in any other context, it would sound very esoteric, but in this, 
<laughs> conversation. It's going to sound. This is out. This is out there. I hope people are. Yeah, this is down yeah. to earth. I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask about these revelations that that the Pentagon has come up with. You know about um, UFO sightings. Mm-hmm. It was this report in June? You know the Pentagon mm-hmm. report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What What do you think about that? Is that just uh, smoke and mirrors, or no, are they no, actually I mean... talking about what's actually happening? I mean, real. Uh... Yeah, they're karmically. I mean, Dr. King. The Ethereum Society is the world's oldest international UFO, organi- UFO organization. He was campaigning for UFOs, uh, you know, in, in the fifties, you know, in outside Parliament with a. So yes, he, you know, this- but I mean, some people say that these films that they are releasing now that they're just showing stuff that actually isn't actually real U- UFOs and extraterrestrial. Oh no, no. Beings. I mean, it's it's all you know, it's all true, of course, but. Uh, you just got to realize the spiritual aspect. So there's, they have all this incredible technology, and then karmically, they're just allowed to show us a few things. But yeah. um, no, I mean, uh, but you got to realize that driving every one of those is, is somebody equivalent to Jesus. You know, it, it takes twenty thousand years to study to learn to drive one of those things. Yeah, it's, um, you know, <laughs> and that's just those are the those are the 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 the, um, the scout craft. I mean, there's there's giant ships you know that just on another frequency of vibration mm-hmm. right every you know out there hovering uh around earth all the time yeah right? yeah so that there's there's you know it, it's star wars mm-hmm. stuff you know yeah and all that all was a documentary movies. wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> probably they're all just to raise you know gradually you know if you look 100 years ago we were on horseback or whatever i mean yeah if you look at the speed of acceleration mm-hmm. And to think that, like you're saying, I mean, that we, that just came about because, you know, because we're smart and it's never happened before anywhere in the galaxy. And, you know, we're the bright, we're the smartest Googlians. We're, we're doing so, so amazing. <laughs> you know, imagine where you'll be in, you know, a hundred years. And then these, these, yes. once you get into the teachings of the, the Ethereum Society, I've just given you the, uh, there's a lot more. I yeah. just, you know, that it's, yeah, I can imagine. it's incredible. So mm-hmm. I advise people to to check out the website and books like the Nine Freedoms, and because yeah, if you ha- if you're a little bit open to it, it's it's Buddhism and Christianity and UFOs mm-hmm. and technology and science all wrapped up into one big bundle of joy. Yes, I I'm I'm open to reading some of that. Of course, I mean I I have so many other things to read, but sure, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in in. The, this this kind of thing uh so talking about current times in general not just uh, being on the cusp of the age of aquarius there's a lot of turbulence out there i think that there is in the spiritual community a bit a bit of uh, some confusion about as to how how bad it how bad things actually are out there in the world because i'm i'm a, I'm a journalist and i've always been interested in checking trends and facts and figures and charts and things like that and in my view the world is actually, I mean, pretty good place uh, talking about, I mean, physical violence and physical suffering and things like that. Then, then, of course, people can conceive and perceive things as being terrible and they can they can suffer internally and mentally and all that. That's much di- more difficult to, to measure. But sometimes I hear in the spiritual community, there's so much talk about the horrible world that we're in and it's so terrible and the, the destruction and the violence and everything. I'm, I go. Seems hey. all right to me where I am in the sat- looking out of the beautiful sea and uh, yeah, yeah. Never What's, been a better time to live. Never been no, a better no, time to no live. War. We have everything we need. We have water, food, and I mean, of course, people in Africa are still yeah. starving, but much fewer now than just 30, 40, 50 years ago. Oh yeah, it, it is better actually. So, well, this is also the work of Dr. King because you know he fought the Armageddon. The sixties came on the bloom. Thank you, you know. thank you, Dr. King. <laughs> I mean, he. You yeah. know, there, there was a huge. You know, without Dr. King, California would be underwater. You know, the um, the San Andreas Fault was due to go, but they sent energy into the psychic centers ah. there, and they, you know, there's they've stopped wars with the with the, with the spiritual batteries. Um, so yeah, this without Dr. King, his work behind the scenes, you would yeah. not be in this the situation you are in now. And there is also uh, a lot of talk in some some circuits about the uh, enormous activity, UFO activity and ET activity just after the wor- World War, when when we actually blew, uh, we actually uh, the bombs, yeah, you know, yeah. 
the 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 bomb the three nuclear bombs that we actually detonated and they were really worried so there was a lot of activity i yeah. hear uh which also led to some changes which is probably uh, i mean connected there was a ufo over that. over there was a ufo over chernobyl the russians reported it and they're sending down energy it would have been a lot chernobyl would have been a lot worse without okay chernobyl already was terrible i mean we already yeah had um you know the te- results from it all over europe but mm. without that interference without that craft we would have been, it would have been a huge disaster so yeah we're, we're on <laughs> every day there's these huge also in the ethereum society it's um you know it's, it's like men in black meets uh star wars meets um <laughs> the x-files meets yeah it's it's incredible so it's wonderful yeah <laughs> i love it okay this has been uh, very interesting and very esoteric and uh, hands down and i mean hand, yeah <laughs> <laughs> do i get a little prize do i get a little trophy for this uh, i don't Anders? know what i'm saying but it's it's been very very interesting and um, maybe we can talk talk again sometime but be jack to, yeah what uh what are your goals now for for pod songs and for you personally what's what's going to happen with that well i want to get pod songs to be you know the a very well-known podcast you know i'm, I'm trying i'm doing pod songs I've I've I used to have many for my hundredth episode. I'm having all the songs that I've written about the Ethereum Society. So I had many Ethereum Society guests on, um, and we talked about as you as you saw the Mother Earth, you know, the Violet Flame, the the, the Nine Freedoms. So, um, so my first episode. But I already want to be pod songs to be very more mainstream and to get and it puts a lot of people off the spiritual aspect. So. I'm ho- I've started another podcast, The Mystic Cast, mm-hmm. and so I talk interview metaphysicians and other members of the Ethereum Society, and so I'll have that. I'll advertise that at the end of each episode, and I'll have I'll channel my efforts into that. So I have these two podcasts now, and I hope to raise money for the society and raise awareness because we have to build some shape power temples, and we have we have to get the numbers up. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, of course, I will provide some links, relevant links in the in the description boxes. But uh, you can just please uh, tell the audience where where they can find Podsongs and and your work. Yeah, Podsongs.com, Podsongs on Instagram, Twitter, iTunes. It's just fascinating because every episode is different. You know, whoever the musician wants to talk about, we talk about if they want to talk about mushrooms, if they want to talk about mental health, if they want to talk. So it's it's super fascinating, and that I'm learning a lot. And then um, the mystic cast, mystic cast, one word without with two one word without two C's, is is on all the usual podcast players. Um, but yeah, just sign up to the mailing list at podsongs.com. And the Ethereum Society is A E T H R I U S. Ethereum means one who comes Ethereus. through the ethers. Yeah. Dot org. Um, 12 blessings.org 12 with a number you can do the blessings and i should also mention um my, my spiritual teacher Nehemiah davis is uh, mysticknowledge.org and he um he has all these esoteric books from you know the theosophical society um you know all the ancient yoga books these occult mm-hmm. books all for free down from his website so you can see because there's all this occult knowledge and it really you know so he's a, a master of those studied those yoga teachings and he it ties in perfectly with the theorist society teachings which kind of update those all so it's also a great resource jack stafford uh inspiring fun interesting this conversation has made me uh think about even more things and and um, <laughs> give me even more things to meditate on good luck with all your endeavors and and your unique uh, uh creation there now Thanks, Anders. I appreciate you taking the time to help me. Bye-bye. Bye. If you like this video and other interviews and talks on Mind the Shift, please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all the support.
Thank you.